the book of Jude. There's just one chapter in this book. We're going to begin reading with verse 16. If you would, would you stand with us in reverence to the reading of the infallible Word of God. Verse 16 says, These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lust, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And some having compassion, making a difference, underline that verse. And others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, having even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Father, thank you for this time today that we have with our folk. And I ask you, Lord, uh, as we go into this message today, Father, would you help me to give you the very best I've got Father, would you bless my ignorance, strengthen my weakness. God, may my uh, weakness be made perfect in your strength. God, may my uh, ignorance, uh, Father, would you touch uh, my voice. And Lord, would only those things that come from you uh, uh, come out today. And Father, may uh, in our ignorance, may your wisdom be made perfect. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you. For it's in Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you, and I preached on this subject here uh, about two years ago, uh, but uh, I haven't worn it out yet. The text is making a difference. Making a difference. You know, I believe that God put every one of us here to make a difference. Uh, whether uh, there's uh, a lot of places that we can make a difference. We can make a difference in our home. We can make a difference at our church. We can make a difference in our town that, or city that we live in. We can make a difference in other folks' lives. But I want to just kind of show you uh, some things here that God showed me. Now, uh, what did he say would make a difference? He said our most holy faith would make a difference, didn't he? How would that make a difference? Well, the first thing, now, now I want you to notice uh, the, the difference that it makes in our lives as individuals is number one, it helps us to control our lust. You say, well, preacher, how does Faith help you control your lust. Well, if we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died and that God raised Him from the dead, that He died for us and for our remission of our sins, then it'll make us want to live like Him, won't it? It'll make us want to uh, get away from these uh, lusts. And there's a lot of different lusts. And I'm not just talking about uh, lust of the flesh, but I'm talking about there's, uh, I've never seen a time when people lusted after so many things. They lust after money. They lust after power. Yeah. They lust after uh, 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 sex. All of these things are things that people lust after today. 
to want something, to want something, to want something. That's what lust is, is when we get to where we just want something so bad that nothing else matters. But you know what I wish we had lust after today? I wish we had lust after Jesus. And I wish we had lust after more power with Him. But He said that our faith would keep us out of those places where we once was. I, I, I think about today and I think about the time that we're living in. Now, I've never seen a time when people wanted so much. Susan and I were talking about simple times, about times when we were growing up, and how it was simple. Daddy worked, Mama took care of the house, Daddy come in, we sat down at the supper table, we all had supper together, we got up on Sunday morning, we went to church together, on Sunday night we went to church together, we sat around uh, at night. Uh, and, and had a family altar and we'd all sit around that family altar. Times were simple. When somebody in the community was hurt, the whole community come in and they helped. But I believe with all my heart that one, thing, one of the things that we need in our lives today is we need that faith that controls that lust in our hearts and makes us to be glad and happy of what we already have in our lives. Amen. I want you to just think about how much God has blessed you. Just put it on a personal level today. Amen. Most of us will go home this afternoon. We'll walk into an air-conditioned or a heated home. We'll sit down in a comfortable chair. We'll turn on that one-eyed monster. Me and Bud will watch Gunsmoke. I don't know what the rest of you watch. Susan says she's seen Gunsmoke so much till she hates it when she hears Matt Dillon's name is. But seriously, we have it better than any generation ever before us have had. Right. God has been so good to America. God has blessed us right. so much. The poorest person in this house today is blessed of God. Amen. Most of us are blessed with good health. Amen. And at our age, that's saying a lot. To be blessed with good health. Amen. Men can have a pretty rough time with this old arthritis sometimes. And I, I, I don't know about Ken, but I sure can groan and moan when I get up and go to hurt. And uh, uh, last night I was laying there on that bed and I said, "Oh Lord, I'm hurting so bad. Lord, would you just touch me tonight? Would you let me sleep?" And you know, in just a few minutes. Just a calm come over and I just went off to sleep and uh, this morning God woke me up with that rooster crowing next door that I want to kill so bad. <laughs> no, I was just kidding that my son's rooster and he'd get ill if I killed his rooster. <laughs> but uh, I can remember when I was a child growing up out there on the farm, chickens running around everywhere Every morning, you'd hear that old rooster crow. Daddy would get up, and when Daddy got up, everybody got up. <laughs> Daddy went to bed, everybody went to bed. See, he knew he had to get up and go to work the next morning, and, 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 and we respected him enough that we knew that too. But he took care of us, and he saw to it that we had food on our table and clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. Amen. But I think more of a time when the church loved one another. When the church, that faith that they had yeah. sustained them. When it come drought, they had pray for rain. When it rained too much, they had pray for God to shut up heaven. Because see, they had to have yeah. that 
uh, weather just right to, for the crops to come in. If the cows had grass in the fields, it had to be right. They had hay on the ground, they couldn't cut that hay if it rained every day. So they had to be periods there to where it was rain and periods where it wasn't rain in order to get everything done the way they wanted to do. And their faith sustained them during those times. They believed that if they asked God to do something, God would do it. I told you the story about old man Mitchell with that, uh, uh, that umbrella going to pray for rain. They believed that God answered. They had faith that sustained them in that time. Amen. That faith also kept them where they ought to be with God. And it will keep us today if we will allow that faith to do that. I think of that little verse of scripture. And I was out there the other day uh, in that little old garden. I, was, uh, I had planted some uh, turnips and I had them put a little mustard seed and all that in there. I, I mixed mine, in other words. And I was looking at them little old turnip seed, mustard seed. And the Lord said that was one of the smallest of the seeds. But when it grew up, it would make a bush that the fowls could nest under or could get under. And I thought, as I was looking at that, and I thought about, he said if we had faith as that grain of mustard seed, we could say to a mountain, be moved, and it'd be moved. Yeah. Every one of us have got mountains in our lives today. Yeah. There's not a one in this house that's not facing mountains. Yeah. Whether it be physical mountains or spiritual mountains, whatever those mountains are, we're all facing them today. But I'm glad that that faith will move those mountains for us if we will just allow it to. Amen. Faith will make a difference in our life. Amen. Not only will it help us right now in the here and here, but it gives us hope of the future. Last Sunday I talked to you about I, uh, I've been reading about heaven. You're lately, I don't know about you, but I've just seemed like I've just got a longing to go home. Seem like every day I wake up and I look out uh, uh, at the sky and I say, Lord, is this the day you're coming back to get us? You see, my faith tells me that he is coming. That he is, that he does have my future in his hand. And that he has my future secured. And that I can depend on him. That I know that he promised. And he's faithful that promised that if he went away, he would come again and receive us unto him. That where he was, we could be. I'm glad, glory to God, that our faith that makes a difference in our Christian life. Because we understand and we believe and we know how through faith that he is coming again. Amen. Amen. Our faith also encourages us to watch over others. Right. This morning in Sunday school, we were talking about that very thing. About having a burden for other people. I can't tell you how long it's been since I saw a church really under a burden for lost souls. I'm not talking about there's a difference in concern and a burden. When we have a burden for somebody, it causes us to lose sleep. It puts us in a position to where that's all we think about. That's all we, uh, we're concerned about is winning that person to God. I'm glad that I grew up in a time 
when the church had burden for the lost, when they were concerned about the lost, when they wanted to see the lost saved. Amen. This day that we're living in today, drugs, you, uh, Susan, we stopped and got gas and she got a newspaper and you know what the, all the headlines were just about it? Drug bust here, drug bust there, drug confiscated here. Drugs confiscated there. I've never seen a time when our children, now I'm talking about children, I ain't talking about grown folks, I'm talking about children. From, you know, one day, one, one day last week when they uh, uh, found all those drugs in a middle school, Do you realize what a middle school is? Yeah. That's between grammar school and junior high. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we're talking about ten uh, uh, kids, nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old <coughs> that are carrying drugs to school, that are selling them, that are taking part in them. Yeah that are sticking needles in their arms, that are snorting cocaine, that are smoking dope. Right, We're talking about kids that don't even know what life is about yet. Amen. Yeah. And that stuff's sucking the life right out of them. Mm -hmm. Are we concerned? I am. Because i got grandkids. I've got one that's in that category that's 11 years old. God help the man that put drugs in my child's hands if I knew about it. Or my grandchild. I would be healed. But we're sitting around and all this happening, we're concerned. But do we really have a burden? I'm talking about a burden that keeps you from sleeping, that puts you in your prayer closet at night, that wakes you up in the middle of the night and uh, uh, you can't see nothing but that child's face in front of you and uh, that child that drugs and alcohol are overtaking them at an early age that are destroying their life completely. Well, preacher, we got drug task force. We got all this. We're doing everything we can. Are we really? You know what would help more than a drug task force? Some mamas and daddies with a burden for them kids that get them in the house of God on Sunday morning. Amen. Amen. On Sunday night and Wednesday night. Amen. They say they're concerned about their kids, but a baseball game more important than the house of God to them. They're more concerned with seeing them hit a baseball than they are getting an altar of prayer and accept Christ their Savior. And you say, well, preacher, I don't believe that. You can believe it because we see it every day. You can't even have a Bible school at church because you can't get them off the ball field long enough. Amen. Amen. Well, preacher... Maybe one day he'll get a scholarship to go to school and it'll make his life better. How many of you been reading in the paper about the young man from Florida that had the scholarship, went on to play professional football, had the world in, the, uh, world in his hands? Killed his wife. Or is live in. Not just her, but kill several people. Why? He had everything in the world.
He didn't have everything. He didn't have Jesus. Didn't have Jesus. Amen. Because that's the one thing that could make the difference in his life. Amen. Children today are beaten, they're abused, they're misused, they're, uh, they're treated, uh, they're, they're just instruments for somebody's lust. And we sit around, watch it go on every day. Do we have a burden? I think about my children. Oh, I took them to church. I raised them in church. They saw me stand and preach and pastor for years and years and years. I carried burdens for them. I pray to many a night in an old rock altar out behind the house. Ask God to take care of my kids, to save them, not to let them die and go to hell. I still wake up at night sometimes and I'll roll over on my pillow and I'll say, God, please protect them wherever they're at. God, please watch over them. God, don't let them die and go to hell. But there was a time when not only my kids were important, but others were too. How long they used to, uh, we sang a song here all the time. How long has it been since you talked with the Lord? Since you told him your heart's hidden secrets. How long since you stayed? How long since you prayed? On your knees till the light shone through. How many of us today could say, I prayed all night long last night? How many could say, I had a burden so bad that I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, it just drove me crazy for somebody else out there in the world? You see, our faith ought to give us that burden. It ought to make us to understand that there's folks out there dying and going to hell. I want to go home. I'm ready to go home. But there's multitudes of people out there that aren't. What did he say? Snatching them out of the fire. I believe that we as children of God ought to be snatching everyone we can out of the fire. Literally reach in there with our faith and our burden and say, God, this is, we're not going to allow this is to go to hell, Lord. Right, we're going to stay on our knees till you do something. God, bring Holy Ghost conviction on them. Yes, Cause the sleep to flee from them. Make them miserable. Preacher, mm -hmm. you believe you bring misery down on somebody? I sure do. Amen. I believe if our faith's what it ought to be, when we fall on our knees and we go to calling on God, I believe God is obligated to answer our prayers. Amen. Brother, when folks get under such a uh, convicting power of God that they can't sleep, they can't eat, they go on their job, they can't even think about when all they can think about is that message that they heard ringing in their ear, brother, they'll do something about it. Amen. That prayer of a righteous man of God or woman of God makes a difference. But you know what we do now? Now watch this. We even use the terminology. I'm going to say a prayer for you. 
Don't say no prayer for me. If you can't pray a prayer, don't you get on your knees. Amen. You see, I believe. I believe we ought to pray in the Holy Ghost. Preacher, what are you talking about? Have you ever got on your knees and the Holy Ghost of God just wrap around you and you go to pray and you don't even know what you prayed about when you got up? You just know that when you got up, how uh, there was a relief uh, because that prayer was gone. Uh, uh, that the precious uh, Holy Ghost of God carried it straight uh, out of the throne room of God. Uh, I'm telling you that's when a uh, uh, prayer works uh, is when it's carried uh, by the Holy Ghost. And it gets the word to a place at the right hand of the Father where intercession is made. Well, glory to God. That prayer is answered. Amen. That prayer will make a difference in the lives of others. It'll make a difference in a city. It'll make a difference in a nation. Amen. And it'll make a difference in a home. Amen. When we get under a burden and we stay out I know people that stayed under burden for folks for years. Did they give up? No. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mary Joe Douglas, that precious saint of God, <laughs> every time she got up on Sunday morning, every uh, service we had, she got up and said, pray for Charles. Pray for Charles. Pray for Charles. Boy, I heard that every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, every time the church got together, I heard her say, pray for Charles. Charles was her husband. Made whiskey bootlegged. But you know what? That prayer, That prayer of faith, them folks praying in the Holy Ghost, them folks begging God, that burden that they had, it changed on Charles' profession. <laughs> Old Charles got saved by the grace of God, yeah. quit selling liquor and went to Hall and Pokewood. He's gone home to be with God now. Charles Douglas was a good man, had a good heart. But he was lost and undone without God. And he had a he had a precious wife that loved him and a precious wife that just absolutely was going to hold God to it. God, you're going to have to save my household. And she held God to that standard. And brother God done what he had to do to do it. I thank God every day for knowing men, women like Mary Jo Douglas and like Peggy Griffin that men and like Luther Bice and when they fell on their knees, Brother Heaven yeah. paid attention because they yeah. prayed. Brother, when they prayed, they didn't say a prayer. They prayed a prayer. And I thank God for women like them, like Augusta Bice, that never give up on this old country boy, but prayed for me. Brother, I love them today. I appreciate them. And the reason I'm where I am today is because that burden they carried for this old country boy. And brother God made a difference in my life because of them. Amen. Amen. He didn't just say to pray in the Holy Ghost. But he said, pray fervently. What does that mean? Continually. Right. 
You know, I know good as a grown man when my prayer goes through. And I know when God's got it. Yeah. But that don't keep me from still praying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I believe that we need to pray and pray and pray. What do you say? Pray without ceasing. We need to get that burden in our hearts so bad that we can't stop praying. We gotta just keep praying. I'm telling you when we get that way, God will move heaven and earth for us. We just need glory to God to keep on praying. Amen. Amen. Pray continually and pray earnestly. 